welcome to my channel on numerical methods in civil engineering like share subscribe press bell button for latest updates okay let us uh, move on to the next unit actually unit for uh, numerical methods in uh, uh, civil engineering that is by numark method yeah so uh, this numark method actually uh, very useful for computation of uh, slopes in case of beams uh, and uh, as well as deflection for different types of loading actually for complex loads okay so as usual uh, kind of loads uh, everybody know how to find out the slope deflection okay there are so, so many methods which you have done in uh, structure analysis so this numark method uh, uh, is actually developed by uh, uh, numark okay and uh, it's a numerical procedure okay and uh, the distributed load is replaced by equivalent concentrated load whatever uh, the distributed loads which will be there uh, they will be replaced by concentrated loads and at equally uh, spaced uh, points okay those are called as uh, pivotal points okay i'll let, i'll show you what are those uh, pivotal points and all okay uh, these are the pivotal points okay uh, so equivalent concentrated loads at pivotal pivotal points are equal and opposite to the reactions of the uh, reactions of the pivotal points when the segments of the beam between the pivotal points are treated as simply supported beams actually let me consider this okay uh, you know if you consider uh, these ones okay this will be the uh, udl okay irregular udl which will be there so what it has to be done is it will be split into number of pieces okay number of uh, divisions first thing is uh, the load is whatever udl uvl uh, uniformly varying load is there it will be split into number of uh, loads okay number of portions and that will be converted into a, a, a equivalent joint loads okay so if you consider these this as a, a loading so it will create two loads okay equal and i mean uh, they, they will be actually you will have uh, let us say for example if you have a beam like this okay and if you have a udl on this okay and this can be same as okay this can be same as a beam which is loaded by okay two reactions which are uh, you know which are the resultant of these two okay this, this uh, udl so you can convert this udl into half udl this side half udl this side and which will be acting over here okay so because they, they are very small portion we will consider okay so half load will go here and half load will go here so this is the equivalent uh, load okay equivalent load uh, that's nothing but we will be converting this udl into equivalent load here so similarly so that means this whatever udl is there which is there okay which is acting upwards that will develop equivalent load one here and other here okay so let's say this is uh, p2 uh, uh, p there will be one p from this side similarly there will be one p from this side uh, okay due to this udl this udl so uh, together it will form p2 so that way uh, you will be calculating the r u the, the udl will be uh, converted to point loads and that will be used to find out uh, the uh, uh, the bending moment shear forces and then you will be finding out the slope and deflections okay so this kind of uh, complex uniform varying loads can be converted into point loads and then shear force bending moment and uh, slope and deflection can be obtained so the formula given by newmark for finding out uh, these uh, the equivalent uh, loads is given by h by 6 into 2 w naught okay if uh, for the starting load okay this is starting load right actually this is not the end load okay this is starting load so starting load is equal to p1 which is equal to h divided by 6 into 2 w naught plus w1 okay h uh, h divided by 6 right formula so the first ordinate into twice twice the first ordinate plus uh, one ordinate next p2 p2 will consist of h by 6 w naught plus w2 okay first and uh, uh, the last ordinate okay this ordinate and this ordinate plus 
4 times W1, center ordinate. 4 times the center ordinate. That way. Next, P3, if you want to calculate, let me just choose a different color. So, I'll, I'll be annotating with blue color for calculation of P3. So, for calculation of this P3, so we need to consider two portions of UDL, okay? Uh, one, uh, this, this uh, one portion, this is another portion, out of which this is the starting ordinate and uh, this will be the ending ordinate and this will be the middle ordinate. So, P3 will be equal to H by 6 into starting ordinate, okay, this is starting ordinate W1 plus 4 times the middle ordinate, okay, plus uh, 1 times the, uh, the end ordinate, okay. That way you will have to calculate the equivalent joint loads. This is given by the new mark. Similarly, so what will be P4, anybody? How do you find P4? Let me use some yellow color. Hmm. Yeah, P4, how do you calculate P4? I'm sorry. Lata Sri, P4? Hello? Sir. Huh. P4, how do you calculate P4? That's nothing but we are replacing this UDL. Actually speaking, loads will be acting downwards, okay? This is for explanation purpose. It was acting upwards, but instead it will act downwards, okay? Now, now how do you calculate P4? P4 is equal to Hello? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I have unmuted all. Now, Hello? Latashree, who is there now? Just yes, answer sir. me, anybody. Yes, sir. Yes. How do you calculate P4? Shall I repeat again? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, so for finding P4, you need to consider two portions, okay? Uh, this one U, UDL part, and the other UDL part is this. Okay, there are two portions. This is the one and uh, this is another one. Okay, so now what you should do, there will be three ordinates. W2 starting ordinate, W3 middle ordinate, W4 the end ordinate. Therefore, the starting, I mean, therefore P4 is equal to, H is nothing but distance between the R interval, okay? interval of taking the uh, ordinates, right? So P4 is nothing but P4 is equal to H divided by 6, okay? H divided by 6 into W2, the first ordinate, into 4 times W middle ordinate, okay? And uh, plus uh, last ordinate. That is the formula for, you just remember this formula. Starting ordinate, uh, uh, starting, you know, starting uh, intensity, I mean, uh, equivalent uh, load will be equal to H by 6. 2 times the initial ordinate plus uh, the second ordinate, okay. Because for P1, only one uh, UDL will be there. For all other intermediate uh, loads, there will be two, two UDLs which will be there, okay. And the right hand side one and the left hand side. But for P1, there is only right hand side load. For P6, there is only left hand side load. So that way you will be getting uh, all the loads, equivalent loads. And then if you want to calculate P6, okay, you have only this load which is there, okay? So out of which you have W4 and W5, therefore, uh, the, 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 the value will be equal to H by 6 into 2 times, this is actually W5, okay? 2 times W5 plus 1 times W4. That's nothing but the end ordinate, whatever is there outside, that will be twice and the center will be only one time W4. So that way you'll be calculating equivalent uh, loads. All of you clear? equivalent loads so that means you will yes, be replacing sir. udl in as a point load set of number of point loads okay you understood right so then let me just show you, show you once again yeah so what what actually we will be doing is uh, there will be a udl okay there will be udl on a beam okay that we will be splitting into number of pieces, right? And converting them into point loads at the joints, okay? So half load will go here, half load will go here. From here, half load will go, come this side and half load will come this one, will form one reaction, one, one force. Similarly, from this UDL, half load will come this side, half load will come this side. 
so that way okay just take it like that but uh, there is a proper formula which is given by the new mark you should need to uh, you know follow this is the formula which is given by the new mark understood all of you yes no yes sir okay so let us move on so after finding out uh, uh, that's actually for uh, linear kind of uh, loads so that is if you consider uh, you know straight lines uh, udls in uh, straight lines okay if the variation if it is like this uh, straight line variation okay then this is the formula which is applicable if sometimes the udl i mean the variation of the load is a parabolic like this okay it will go like this in such situation uh, in order to calculate the equivalent loads you need to use this formula okay uh, p not is equal to h by 24 7 w not plus 6 w1 plus w2 okay so whenever you have uh, this thing uh, uniformly varying load now actually even though uh, you have only one load which is contributing to p not assuming because usually we assume that this is the only portion which is contributing to p not but uh, you know because the variation is such a way that there is some part of this also which is contributing here so it uh, the numark has in, incorporated that as well okay so the effect of this w2 also being considered uh, for p not and this is the formula which is given by the numark okay so this is for a variation of uh, varying load like this like for example this is let us say for example there is a uh, water where, uh, you know which is there above the some slab or something like that so it will have this kind of variation right uh just i'm giving an example so that way there can be other uh, kind of loads also which will have this kind of uh, variation in the load so that time you need to convert uh, same uh, uniform I and mean, varying load to uh, equivalent loads like this only the difference is formula okay so you will have to use different formula uh, the starting uh, load equivalent load and uh, ending uh, load will be different and uh, in between loads will be different so starting and ending loads are p not is equal to hy24 plus 7w not starting ordinate 7 times the starting ordinate and 6 times middle ordinate okay minus 1 times 1 uh, time the end ordinate okay so this is the formula for uh, the end load end load all intermediate uh, loads for all intermediate loads uh, the formula is different which is given by h by 12 into w not okay w not uh, plus 10 times uh, the middle ordinate okay and then the uh, one time the last ordinate for this one p1 so let us say for example for p4 i i'll just explain h by 12 into one time this uh, w3 n times w4 one time w5 you can see here okay h by 12 w3 plus 10 times w4 plus uh, w5 okay that's how you need to calculate equivalent uh, loads in case of uh, uh, you know the parabolic variation kind of uh, loads okay uh, variation is parabolic next so new mark procedure can be conveniently used to determine the shear forces moment slopes and deflections i'll show you how uh, can be done it uh, okay and uh, you should know the uh, relations between so in order to do that you should know the uh, relations between uh, shear force bending moment um, actually shear force load um, and then shear force bending moment and then uh, bending moment slope and then slope on deflection so this is the relationship between uh, the load and shear force v where v is the shear force okay and uh, yeah here as you can see here v is shear force w is the uniformly distributed load and uh, what is the relation between uh, we know that this one w is equal to dv by dx okay and uh, that way uh, so therefore w is equal to dv by dx uh, and uh, you, if you write vice versa dv is equal to w by dx i mean w into dx that way and similarly v is equal to dm by dx or dm is equal to v into dx or just we can say v into uh, dx okay or d uh, m is equal to v into dx so this is the relationship these are the relationship we need to keep it in mind okay w is equal to i mean v is equal to w into dx m is equal to v into dx okay so each one is multiplied by dx okay so you can see here you start from w okay load always problem start from w right therefore shear force is equal to w into dx okay where dx is the interval interval length of the udl okay small interval small load 
and then m is equal to the previous got answer that's nothing but v into dx okay and then slope is equal to the thing is you in order to uh, get the slope you need to have one ea term that's it other than that we just need to multiply previous term with the dx m into dx but since it is slope we need to divide it by ei okay that's how you will find out uh, slope then the deflection y is equal to previous value that's nothing but phi into dx okay so these are the relationships already you we have derived uh, in case of strength of materials of third semester subject all of you clear uh, hello okay so you need to remember these formulas uh, for the later problems okay uh, let me explain the procedure of this uh, you know uh, pro, i mean numars method okay uh, so first thing is you need to divide uh, the given uh, uh, the load into number of pieces okay then you calculate equivalent joint load as i have told you and now explained and then uh, what you think is you need to assume a trial shear force at one end and then the uh, okay I'll, I'll 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 just explain this with uh, <clears throat> prob example okay now let me take up uh, one uh, example like this okay uh, just give me a minute Okay. Okay. Let me consider. Uh, yeah, let us consider a beam uh, with UDL. Okay. We'll have to divide uh, this into uh, number of pieces. okay so uh, let us consider a udl and uh, uh, simply supported me with udl so it has to be divided into number of pieces okay so step 1 i am explaining so and then the step 2 step 2 is nothing but we should find out equivalent uh, point loads okay uh, pivot loads uh, by considering by dividing that in udl into number of pieces so we have divided it into num six number of pieces okay uh, therefore the uh, thing is the formula will be given by uh, p not p na p is equal to h by 62 times w not plus w n you remember right that formula so you will have to calculate uh, that p p not here you will have to get it so uh, because this is the udl the value of w i mean w1 w2 w3 is same everywhere isn't it because earlier uh, there was some variation in the load here okay so the value of w were varying but now because of udl uh, there will be a straight line portion okay if there, the, the, that value will be straight line okay so w will be same everywhere right so w1 w1 w2 everything will be w only so that is what we are considering here so we w here so w0 w1 w2 everything is equal to w for all the values okay therefore p0 will be given by so p0 p1 and p we need to calculate all the, so because this udl will be replaced by point load since now uh, udl is acting downwards okay we need to replace uh, i mean uh, this udl by downward joint i mean equivalent load okay so which is uh, which are given by p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 p6 up to p6 now let us consider p0 for calculation of p0 so uh, finding this p0 we know the starting and the ending uh, uh, the joint loads given by uh, equivalent load given by h by 6 two times the initial ordinate okay w not plus uh, the next ordinate okay next w right so that will give you uh, the value of p not and we know that that is acting downwards so it has to be negative sign okay whereas the reaction upwards will be taken as positive so next p1 p1 is uh, and, and we know that w0 is uh, is equal to w1 is equal to w 
therefore h by 6 into 2 w1 i mean 2 w plus w so it will become 3 w 3 w 3 by uh, 6 will be 0. 0.5 3 by 6 it will be 0. 0.5 right 0. 0.5 w into h that is the uh, the value of p naught okay similarly next p1 p1 is equal to minus h by 6 into starting ordinate uh, okay then four times the middle ordinate and the one times the last ordinate okay so w naught plus 4 w1 plus w2 that's nothing but minus h by 6 w because all w values w1 w w2 all are w therefore w plus 4 times w plus w this will be 6 w so therefore 6 by 6 w by 6 uh, will be w okay so uh, that 6 6 will cancel out therefore only wh will be the value so all intermediate uh, that's nothing but p1 to p5 will have all, uh, the value equal to minus wh okay so the last values uh, will be minus 0.5 wh okay so this is how we will be calculating uh, the uh, value of uh, uh, joint i mean uh, equivalent loads okay next uh, we need to calculate the shear force uh, let, let me show you uh, thing is okay uh, according to this uh, we need to uh, calculate the shear forces right so for finding out the shear force what newton uh, new uh, sorry new method says is uh, we will have to assume a shear force starting shear force starting point left support okay uh, the shear force at uh, left support on uh, so we have 10 more minutes okay i'll just close here yeah <clears throat> So we need to assume the starting shear force. So a trial shear force is to be assumed at the left support. Okay, uh, this value is equal to three. I'm just sorry. This value is three. Okay. So a shear value has to be assumed uh, in the beginning. Okay, at the starting point. Okay, and the later the next shear force will be given by according to uh, procedure according to new mark the succeeding segments are equal to preceding shear that means the previous value okay yeah previous value that's nothing but v 0 l okay v 0 l plus the uh, the pivotal load are equivalent concentrated load at, the, load at the pivotal point preceding segments previous one whatever is there at the previous point okay preceding point so that value has to be added since it is negative it will be i mean it is downwards it is negative okay so therefore initially we need to assume how will how how to assume i'll let you know okay so actually speaking what what we are doing is uh, what we need to do is there is a udl okay in the given beam we need to calculate bending moment shear force uh, shear force bending moment slope deflection that is what okay there are so many, uh, you know, uh, regular methods we have. This method is given by the new mark. Okay. Why this is necessary is, okay, uh, in, uh, see, uh, what, are the, what are the methods you have to find out the bending moment and shear force? Regular method, strength of material method, you know. So, what do you do? You will calculate sigma fx, sigma fy, uh, all that, right? Sigma fx, sigma fy, you will calculate, and then bending moment you will calculate, and uh, moment at x equation you will have. And you will calculate bending moment and shear force at x equation you will have and you will calculate shear force. That is regular method. But there are uh, the other methods which will be there, okay, uh, which are, you know, which uh, that, that's nothing but um, uh, numerical method. So numerical method will be very simple. As I've already told you, the difference between numerical method and the integration method are some other methods. So it will be just number calculation, okay, one, two, uh, you just add, subtract. That is what we will be doing. So here also, in new math method, we'll be adopting just addition, subtraction kind of things. Okay, so uh, we will be simplifying the problem. Okay, so maybe it is difficult for you to understand now. Okay, I'll be just uh, explaining you the procedure. Later, we, when we do uh, problems, okay, uh, one or more problems, you'll understand. Okay, now all of you understood up to calculation of uh, equivalent forces, right? All of, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Equivalent yes, joint loads. Yes, sir. Any, no doubt right it is just converting a udl into two loads at the ends right each load that is what we will be doing and that is the equivalent joint load after equivalent joint loads okay so after that what you will be doing is you will have uh, one second 
हाँ ओके सो यू विल हैव यस दिस इज द्लाइड आई ओके so you will have uh, this one you you will be having p not p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 etc etc so now the thing is you need to calculate the shear forces everywhere or here okay i'll, I'll use different little different color okay maybe some uh, purple color will be better so i need to calculate shear force here shear force here shear force here shear force here and shear force here everywhere okay so for calculation of shear force uh, you know there is no method uh, there is nothing uh, i mean there is no rule or uh, uh, there is no guideline given for uh, finding out the shear force exact shear force uh, at this point okay by newmark okay so according to him we need to assume a trial value here okay uh, but for the next values he knows the formula he has given the formula okay so thing is first we need to assume a shear force here afterwards uh, okay we need to calculate the remaining shear forces okay let me clarify so how many shear force values will be there here shear force just left just right isn't it similarly you will have to calculate everywhere okay so when you consider here so there will be uh, one shear force just left and another one right okay so we need to assume this is actually three okay only three only so we assume the shear force on the left hand side okay over here we, that we will assume it as v not v not just left okay and how to assume is because it is a simple udl so what is the shear force i mean support reaction at the ends if, you, if the value of w i mean if the intensity of udl is w what is the re reaction at the ends anybody hello i am talking to you हेलो बिंदु लता लता श्री एनीबॉडी इफ देर इज अ यूडीएल व्हाट आर द व्हाट इज द रिएक्शन वैल्यू एट द एंड्स इफ डब्ल्यू इज द लोड लेंथ इज एल हेलो मल्लिका अर्जुन पावना यार आदरो i just wanted to make sure that you are you are you are uh, you know understanding things what is the reaction at the end hello lata hello gottilla andre gottilla please hello are you there anybody hello mobile ena pakkadalli ittidire namma hello W L by two sir. Ah, W L by two. अलग केल्स को तो इधर है. इस तो थे क्या? W into L will be the length. So W L by two, isn't it? So that is what. So what is W? Uh, so W and L is six H now. So W into six H divided by two. How much? What will be the reaction? So W into six uh, H divided by two. That means three H, isn't it? so v not will be equal to 3h so that to that is the value we are assuming so a trial value of 3 is assumed okay it's not 3 3h okay it is not just 3 it is 3h value okay so initially you will be assuming 3h or here and next set of values you can calculate easily uh, by newmark method okay so uh, actually why You, you you know this 3h is exact method right we we had calculated uh, we have a regular formula that's nothing but uh, w wl by 2 you can calculate but if this udl is uh, you know not a regular udl like like you know you might have uh, a kind of uh, this kind of load you have okay so maybe this kind of load if you had and then you cannot have uh, a formula regular formula here right you cannot say that this uh, react shear force is wl by 2 maybe because it's a very irregular load maybe what you can assume is little lesser you can assume this side little less higher you can assume this side because the udl intensity of udl is more this side so that's the reason why this uh, newmark method is applicable for uh, uh, very irregular loads like this and you know this kind of irregular loads cannot be solved by regular methods because 
you know regular methods applicable for uh, same load UDLs or UVL and all. Okay, but for this kind of very irregular loads, definitely a numerical method is very much necessary. Okay, in that one, a trial value of shear will be assumed uh, over here. Uh, then the further shears can be calculated by the previous shear uh, plus the equivalent joint. So previous shear is three and uh, minus because this P naught is uh, minus 0.5 H. We have already uh, have these values. Okay, we have calculated earlier. So this is and it is multiplier is WH 0.5 WH 1 WH. I have just one minute left over. Okay. I'll be just quickly completing, okay. And similarly, uh, so therefore V1, the next shear force here, okay, V1 will be, V1 will be equal to, what is that V1 equal to? Uh, V0, I mean the previous value, V0 right, okay, v, V0 right, that's nothing but 2.5 H, okay, minus P1, minus P1, that will give you, uh, 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 1.5 H. So 2.5 H previous value minus 1 H. That can be very simply explained here. Okay. So 3 minus 0.5, 2.5, 2.5 minus 1, 1.5, 1.5 minus 1, 0.5, 0.5 minus 1, minus 0.5, minus 0.5 minus 1, 1.5, minus 1.5 minus 1, minus 2.5, minus 2.5 minus 0.5, 3. So this is how you will have to calculate the shear force. So I'll continue in the next class. So I have only. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Press bell button for latest updates.